Exploring the ocean depths, a remarkable discovery unfolded as an old camera. That's right, experts have used special technology to map the entire ship on the ocean floor and create its digital twin. recovered from the deep revealed haunting images of the Titanic's tragic fate. These photographs provide a chilling glimpse into the historic disaster. Capturing moments that remained hidden beneath the sea for decades until the camera unveiled the haunting visuals. Construction of Titanic The creation of the Titanic, a monumental feat that unfolded over 26 months, engaged nearly 3,000 individuals, some of whom tragically lost their lives during construction. The ship boasted 10 decks, three main engines, a 100-ton rudder, and 2,000 hull plates secured by 3 million rivets. Its construction cost an estimated $7.5 million in 1912. With a mere 20 lifeboats for over 2,200 passengers, Titanic's safety measures were insufficient. The vessel also served as a mail carrier, carrying 3,364 bags of mail, with five workers perishing while attempting to retrieve 200 sacks during the sinking. Ticket prices varied from a $4,350 first-class parlor suite to a $15 to $40 third-class cabin bunk bed. The ship's tragic fate, discovered in 1985, has led to its designation as a UNESCO cultural heritage site in 2012. The ongoing deterioration caused by bacteria and natural forces suggests Titanic's complete disintegration within 30 years. A symbol of hubris, loss, and class disparity, the Titanic endures in collective memory. First Class Dining Room Commemorating the Titanic's centennial, the focus on its opulence extends to the first class dining room experience, particularly the meticulously recreated 10-course dinner. Chronicled in books like Last Dinner on the Titanic, and RMS Titanic, dinner is served. The menu reveals extravagant offerings such as filet mignon, poached salmon, roast duckling, squab, and foie gras, each course paired with a wine. However, certain items, like the elusive Waldorf pudding, remain unidentified due to the evolving nature of culinary tastes. The challenge of replicating the entire 10-course meal led to a curated five-course menu, economically feasible, yet retaining the essence of the luxurious original. Amidst considerations of modern palettes and ingredient availability, the Bellevue Club in Oakland was chosen for its exquisite ballroom and enthusiastic embrace of this nostalgic dining endeavor. Titanic Gymnasium. Vintage photographs offer a glimpse into the state-of-the-art gymnasium aboard the Titanic in 1912, showcasing the luxurious amenities available to first-class passengers. As the ship tragically sank on April 14, 1912, the dedicated physical instructor, Mr. T.W. McCauley, remained steadfast at his post. During the early 20th century, transatlantic travel was a crucial means of transportation, lasting around five days. First-class passengers, accustomed to lavish comforts, experienced dreamy oceanic journeys dominated by British and French shipping companies. Recognizing the need for exercise during extended voyages, the Titanic's gymnasium featured 1912 versions of familiar modern equipment, including stationary bikes and rowing machines. Open at designated hours for men, women, and children, the facility was overseen by Thomas McCauley, who remained dedicated until the ship's sinking. These glimpses into early 20th century shipboard fitness contrast with the tragic events that unfolded in the Atlantic. The Musicians. The musicians of the Titanic, including the heroic bandleader Wallace Hartley, played a significant role during the tragic sinking in 1912. Comprising two ensembles, these eight musicians, contracted by Liverpool's CW and FN Black, provided entertainment for second-class passengers. Despite not being on the White Star Line's payroll, they played throughout the ship's final hours, intending to calm passengers as the lifeboats were loaded. The haunting tune, Nearer My God, to Thee, or possibly Songe d'Automne, marked their final performance. Recognized for their bravery, these musicians, such as William Braley and Roger Bricou, all perished in the sinking. Their dedication and sacrifice echo through history, immortalized as they played on amidst the ship's descent into the sea. Titanic Swimming Bath 
the Titanic's first-class passengers enjoyed the luxury of a heated saltwater swimming pool, termed a swimming bath, situated on the starboard side of the ship's F-deck, adjacent to the grand staircase. Measuring 30 feet by 14 feet, the pool featured 13 changing rooms, two showers, and portholes along the starboard side for natural daylight. A rarity at the time, Titanic's pool was only the third of its kind, following her sister ship Olympic and the earlier Adriatic. Accessible to women from 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. and men from 2 p.m. to 6 p.m., the pool required payment with tickets available at the ship's inquiry office. Colonel Archibald Gracie, having neglected exercises during the voyage, found pleasure in the pool hours before the iceberg struck. Despite its intriguing history, the Titanic swimming pool remains unexplored on the wreck. Boy playing on Titanic deck. In the meticulous recreation of the Titanic in James Cameron's 1997 film, even seemingly incidental scenes like a boy playing with a spinning top hold historical accuracy. This moment mirrors a real photograph taken on April 11, 1912, featuring first-class passenger Frederick Spedden and his six-year-old son, Douglas. Captured by Jesuit priest Francis Brown, the image encapsulates life aboard the Titanic. Brown, disembarking in Queenstown, preserved the photo as he didn't complete the Atlantic journey. Remarkably, the Spedden family survived the Titanic sinking, with young Douglas sleeping through the ordeal on a lifeboat. Unfortunately, tragedy struck three years later when Douglas succumbed to a fatal accident, underscoring the poignant connection between historical reality and cinematic representation in the Titanic narrative. The ship's good luck charm. Jenny, the sole feline passenger on the Titanic, played a unique role in pest control, freely roaming the decks to manage the rodent population. Boarding in Belfast, she gave birth to a litter of kittens just before the ship's departure to Southampton in early April 1912. Settling in the galley, Jenny and her newborns received care and sustenance. A curious turn of events occurred as the Titanic docked in Southampton. Jenny carried her kittens ashore one by one, foreshadowing an impending departure. Sensing an ominous premonition, Irish stoker Jim Mulholland, who cared for Jenny and her kittens, chose not to board, a decision validated when tragedy struck a few days later. Jenny's mysterious fate and Mulholland's intuition solidified her status as the Titanic's psychic cat, a legend echoing through time. J.P. Morgan's cancellation. The saga of the Titanic's ill-fated voyage continues to captivate, drawing parallels to present-day maritime tragedies. Recently, a submersible en route to the wreckage met a grim fate, rekindling interest in individuals who, like Milton Hershey, were slated for the Titanic's maiden voyage but changed their plans. Hershey, founder of Hershey's, reserved a spot but altered course returning on the SS America due to pressing business matters, narrowly avoiding the Titanic disaster. J. Pierpont Morgan, the prominent financier and co-founder of major companies, held a personal suite on the Titanic. Despite attending its launch in 1911, he extended his French vacation, missing the catastrophic sinking. The exact reason for Morgan's cancellation remains uncertain, with speculations ranging from health concerns to customs issues due to his art collection. Regardless, Morgan's poignant words after the tragedy underscore the irreplaceable loss of life over monetary concerns. Icy water and hypothermia. The enduring mystery of the iceberg that led to the Titanic's tragic sinking in 1912 continues to captivate, with a photograph believed to capture the iceberg's likeness intriguing experts. Taken by a passenger on the SS Carpathia, the ship dispatched to aid the sinking Titanic, the photo aligns with eyewitness accounts. Departing Southampton on April 10, 1912, the unsinkable Titanic struck an iceberg before midnight on April 14. The SS Carpathia, en route to Italy, received the distress call and altered its course to rescue over 2,000 people. Arriving at the scene three hours after the Titanic's demise, passengers marveled at the surrounding icebergs, a serene yet haunting spectacle in the calm sea, immortalizing the chilling events of that fateful night. Fire in the Hull in January 2017, the Channel 4 documentary Titanic The New Evidence proposed a theory that the Titanic sank primarily due to an uncontrollable fire rather than the iceberg. Journalist Senan Molony, based on a newly discovered photo, suggested a 30-foot-long black mark on the hull indicated a fire. However, this theory faces critical flaws. Firstly, other Titanic photos do not show the alleged mark. Experts argue it could be a lens or developing imperfection. Respected Titanic historians debunked the theory in a paper titled Titanic, Fire, and Ice. They highlighted inaccuracies, 
including the location of the supposed damage, conflicting reports on the fire's status, and the lack of evidence for financial pressures or cover-ups. The consensus rejects the fire theory, affirming the iceberg's role in the disaster. Iceberg Collision A photograph claimed to depict the iceberg that led to the Titanic's sinking is set to be auctioned with an estimated value of over 10,000 euros. Captured the day after the Titanic tragedy, the image includes an unpublished statement from the chief steward of the Prince Adelbert, describing red paint scrapings on the iceberg's side. Unaware of the disaster at the time, the steward noticed the red marks. The estimated guide price for the photograph is between 10,000 euros and 15,000 euros. Acquired by attorneys for Titanic's owners after the sinking, the photo was displayed in their offices until 2002. The auction is scheduled for October 24th at Henry Aldridge and Son in Devizes, Wiltshire. Captains of Titanic Edward John Smith R.D. R.N.R., the 27th of January 1850 to the 15th of April 1912, a British sea captain and naval officer, joined the White Star Line in 1880, commencing a lengthy career in the British Merchant Navy. Serving as the master of various White Star Line vessels, he played a crucial role in transporting British Imperial troops during the Second Boer War. Smith, who served in the Royal Naval Reserve, became captain of the Titanic. Tragically, he went down with the ship during its maiden voyage. Born in Hanley, Staffordshire, Smith's early life involved attending the British school, working at Etruria Forge, and eventually joining the White Star Line. His career included commanding notable ships like the Republic, and he retired from the R&R in 1905 as a commander. Captain Smith, with 38 years of service, was renowned for testing each new ship, earning a reputation for safety and competence. Life Jackets The Titanic's lifeboat allocation was initially guided by tonnage regulations, requiring 16 boats but providing 20. However, with insufficient capacity for half the passengers and crew, this contributed to the tragedy. Post-sinking, regulations changed, linking lifeboat numbers to the vessel's occupants, aiming for sufficient space for all. Compounded by a skipped drill due to a church service, confusion arose during the sinking. Life vests, made of canvas and cork, proved inadequate. Their flimsy design, secured by fabric strings, led to tragic consequences. Many, unable to board lifeboats, jumped overboard, suffering injuries or unconsciousness. Post-Titanic cork life vests persisted until post-World War II redesigns aimed to address past tragedies, improving materials for passenger safety. Passengers waiting to board. A century ago, cork examiner's pioneering press photographer, Thomas Barker, documented two major early 20th century tragedies, the sinkings of the Titanic and the Lusitania. Stepping aboard the Titanic in 1912, Barker captured ordinary scenes that gained immense significance after the ship's fateful encounter with an iceberg. Days later, realizing most individuals he photographed had perished, Barker's images became iconic. His photographs of the Lusitania's aftermath in 1915, skillfully secured amid wartime challenges, portrayed survivors and the deceased. Barker's courage in negotiating permissions to photograph in a war context highlighted the tension between candid documentation and sensitive military concerns. His images, widely published, preserve the stark realities of these historic maritime disasters. Lifeboats. Discovered a month after the Titanic's tragic sinking, haunting images reveal the last lifeboat drifting in the Atlantic, 200 miles from the wreck site. Found by the RMS Oceanic crew on May 13, 1912, the wooden lifeboat bore three decomposing bodies, including a man in his dinner jacket, first-class passenger, Thompson Beatty. Two firemen from the Titanic's engine room also lay among the grim scene. The recovery mission, documented in photographs and a chilling first-hand account, sheds light on the eerie fate of those aboard lifeboat Collapsible A. Among the poignant findings was a wedding band engraved with Edward to Gerda, the only trace of a couple who perished at sea after escaping the sinking liner, the maiden voyage. Embarking on its maiden voyage, the Titanic was poised for a historic journey. Crew members, with the exception of a couple enjoying a last-minute pint in Southampton, were on board. Spare crew members were readily available for such instances, ensuring a smooth departure. Passengers, bidding farewell to loved ones, ranged from those seeking a new life in America in third class to affluent individuals enjoying a pleasure trip in first class. The departure ceremony included the hoisting of the Blue Peter Pennant, signaling imminent departure. 
As the enormous liner navigated the river test, the turbulence it generated caused a tense moment with nearby ships. Quick action averted disaster, showcasing the challenges of maneuvering the colossal vessel. Titanic's engines roared to life, marking the commencement of a journey that would later become synonymous with tragedy. Titanic broke in half. The momentous event of the Titanic breaking in half during its tragic sinking in 1912 remained largely unknown until the discovery of the wreck in 1985 by Robert Ballard. Previous to this revelation, it was widely believed that the ship had sunk intact. Witnesses' accounts, including James Cameron's 1997 film, portrayed the ship splitting from the top down. However, recent forensic studies of the wreck dispute this depiction, suggesting the hull began breaking at a shallower angle of about 15 degrees. Various eyewitness testimonies, such as that of Chief Baker Charles Jowen and First Class Passenger Jack Thayer, vividly describe the ominous sounds and movements during the Titanic's final moments. The accurate understanding of the ship breaking in, too, enhances our comprehension of the disaster, challenging previous misconceptions and adding depth to the historical narrative. Eyewitness Account of the Event In the gripping moments before midnight on April 14, 1912, the RMS Titanic collided with an iceberg, initiating a tragedy that unfolded over two and a half hours. Dr. Washington Dodge, a first-class passenger, documented the harrowing experience in a letter written on Carpathia stationery, offering one of the earliest and most compelling first-hand accounts of the disaster. The letter reveals the chaos and initial disbelief among passengers, emphasizing Dodge's insistence on safety as he guided his family to the starboard boat deck. The meticulous account details their separation, with Dodge securing a spot on a lifeboat, ultimately saving his life. The aftermath saw public outrage and investigations into the disaster's causes, prompting crucial changes in maritime safety regulations. Dodge's narrative, penned in the immediate aftermath, stands as a poignant testament to the Titanic's tragic night, shaping the discourse on maritime safety for years to come. Tragically, Dodge's own life took a dark turn in 1919 with his suicide, marking a somber chapter in the aftermath of the Titanic disaster, the discovery of the Titanic wreck. The groundbreaking discovery of the Titanic wreck unfolds as the result of the largest underwater scanning project in history, offering an unprecedented view of the tragic 1912 event. Using deep sea mapping, scientists have meticulously created the first ever digital twin of the Titanic, revealing intricate details about the crew and passengers on that fateful night. The summer 2022 scans, conducted by a specialist ship off the coast of Canada, meticulously mapped every millimeter of the three-mile debris field. The comprehensive digital replica captures both the bow and stern sections, separated upon sinking. Park Stevenson, a Titanic expert, hails the project as a game-changer, providing engineers with valuable data to examine the mechanics of the ship's breakup and sinking. With 715,000 images and 16 terabytes of data, this project marks a significant leap in underwater 3D modeling, shedding new light on Titanic research and exploration. First ever full-sized view of the shipwreck. The Titanic, the world's most renowned shipwreck, has been unveiled in an unprecedented manner through the first ever full-sized digital scan. Located 3,800 meters beneath the Atlantic, the scan offers a unique 3D perspective of the entire ship, presenting it as if the water has been drained away. The initiative, undertaken by deep sea mapping company Magellan Limited and Atlantic Productions in summer 2022, aimed to provide a comprehensive view of the Titanic, shedding new light on the events leading to its sinking in 1912. Over 700,000 images were captured by submersibles during more than 200 hours of surveying, creating an exact 3D reconstruction. This groundbreaking scan, a significant step towards evidence-based research, offers a complete understanding of the Titanic's current state and opens avenues for re-evaluating historical aspects. In the profound depths of the ocean, the recovered camera unveiled poignant glimpses of the Titanic's tragic demise, offering a haunting connection to the past. These submerged images serve as a testament to the enduring impact of the historic disaster. Thank you for exploring this submerged narrative with us. Subscribe for more captivating historical revelations.